Hello everyone and welcome to Fluent Financials, what you should know for the week of March 28th. My name is Mike Lanise and I'm your Portfolio Manager at Fluent Financial. This past week equities rose modestly, but you had the NASDAQ composite up 2% while the S&P added 1.8%. The Dow Jones was up 0.3% while the Russell 2000 actually fell 0.4%. Nine of the 11 S&P sectors gained ground with energy and basic materials leading the rally. Crude oil faded after the EU showed reluctance in banning Russian oil import, imports, but still added 9% for the week, and oil closed above 112 a barrel. The U.S. 10-year Treasury yield soared 34 basis points to 2.5% after Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell said that he was going to take tough action on inflation that may necessitate um, faster rate hikes. The futures markets are pricing in a 70% probability of a 50 basis point rate hike at the May 4th FOMC meeting. So what's been driving more, this equity rebound? So the S&P was down as much as 13% two weeks ago for the year and is now down only around 4.5%. According to David Leibowitz at JP Morgan, this surge is due to a recovery in the mega cap tech stocks, not necessarily a broader market average. What does he mean by that? So if you look in the last two weeks, the Fang M stocks have risen. Here's some examples. Facebook up 18%. Apple up 13%, along with Amazon up 13%. Netflix is up 10%. Google's up 9%. And Microsoft's up 8.4%. Those stocks make up about 30% of the S&P. So you can really see that the rally in the S&P lately is this tech rally. But the tech had also been way oversold. The labor market remains strong, with initial jobless claims falling to the lowest level since September of 1969. U.S. business activity also jumped to an eight-month high in March. Flash composite PMI rose to 58.5, which is the highest reading since July, as supply chain disruptions and coronavirus cases eased, and that supply chain is beginning to unwind. The average 30-year fixed mortgage rate reached a three-year high of 4.5%, and that's squeezing some home buyers out of new and pending home sales. Inventory remained extremely limited, though, for new home sales, so prices do remain high. Year-to-date, you have the Dow Jones down 3.6%, the S&P down just over 4%, and the NASDAQ down just over 9%. Looking at the week ahead, we're going to have continued volatility as the Russian-Ukraine geopolitical situation plays out. Also, the Fed is betting on a soft landing for the economy, but is unsure about the actual results, as everyone is. The labor market is tight, and this week brings a slew of related release, economic releases, finishing with the non-farm payrolls report on Friday. So let's take a look at that. The JOLTS report, or job openings, will come out on Tuesday, along with consumer confidence, and then followed by the ADP unemployment report on Wednesday. The Fed's preferred inflation measurement, which is the core PCE price index, is the main event on Thursday, while ISM Manufacturing PMI joins at the end of the week. Other news to note that we will get the third and final reading for the fourth quarter GDP this week. As always, feel free to leave comments or questions to this post. Click the like button and share it if you felt that it was informative. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit our FluentFinancial.com website for further information. Thank you for tuning in to What You Should Know and have a great week.